Hey guys, this is Elena from We Learn To Share. In this video, we'll cover confidence intervals by filling the worksheet that I've made just for you guys. So now let's just dive right into our topic. So how do you get the confidence interval for estimating a population parameter? Well, this, is, this will be the general formula that you're going to use to compute the confidence intervals for like all of the rest proportions and means over here. So it would be first getting your statistic plus minus critical value times the standard deviation of statistic. You should also memorize that this statistic is called a point estimate. And this value over here is equal to the margin of error. And the concept of margin of error is kind of important because um, many times the question asks you something like, oh, how do you decrease the margin of error? Like something like that. So if the question asks you, how do you decrease this value or the margin of error? You're going to answer by you could decrease the, the confidence intervals or you can decrease the population standard deviation or you can increase the sample size n. Like memorizing the relationship between these two would be very useful when you um, write your FRQs in the future because I'm sure that there would be pretty many questions that asks you about the margin of error. And now we're going to apply this formula over here to calculate the one sample Z interval for a population proportion. And this is what we're going to do. So your test, test statistic or set your point estimate over here would be P hat plus minus z which is your critical value and you will have the root p square 1 minus p square over n for the standard deviation of statistic and over here for a two sample z interval for difference between two proportions p1 minus p2 plus minus z root p1 1 minus p1 over n1 plus p2, 1 minus p2 over n2. And um, over here, you can see that it's kind of similar with the one sample z interval, except that there are like p1 and the p2, but over here it's only p1, but it's kind of easy to memorize because the overall formula looks very similar. And over here, when you compute the confidence intervals for one sample z interval for population mean, so this z interval will be used when you know the population standard deviation sigma, You will have your x plus minus z sigma over root n. But over here, when you're calculating the t interval or when the sigma is unknown, you're going to use the t interval, right? And over here, you're going to say it by x plus minus t s over root n. And over here, when you're computing the confidence intervals for your two sample t interval for difference between two means, you're going to have x1 minus x2 plus minus t root s1 square n square, sorry, n1 plus s2 square over n2. Mm -hmm. And over here, I'm going to give you the sample answers um, for interpretation of confidence level, confidence intervals, and p-value because there are many questions um, asking you to interpret the confidence level, confidence interval, p-value after you get the value for that. So let's read. Um, if the question asks you to interpret the confidence level or of like 95%, so the green part that I have just highlighted over here is part that could maybe be different on your test day because even though most of the times the a, the college board asks you to interpret the 95% confidence level or interval, it could differ question by question. So it could be 90% or 85%. And over here, you need to write the population parameter in context. So you can just write it from the question. Like, yeah. So let's read the interpretation for confidence levels. 95% of all possible samples of given size from the population will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. Mm -hmm. 
And for the confidence interval, you're going to say we're 95% confident that the interval from x to x and this value would be also something that you have computed after using these formulas. You say we're 95% confident that the interval from x to x captures the actual value of the population parameter in context. And you guys should remember that, that these two, like the confidence level and confidence interval are very two different things. So you must not be confused between them. And yeah, and for the p-value, you would say, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the probability that the statistic would take a value as extreme as or more extreme than the one actually observed or the calculated test statistic. So these interpretations are something that are very frequently um, asked in your FRQ. So it will be useful to memorize these and use them um, in your test day. And I will send you guys the worksheet that I have used over here when you leave a comment below. And so yeah, this would be our end of the video. I hope this video has helped you through your exam. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.